Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. I would like to mention that I think asparaginase is an essential part in the treatment of uh, adult patients with ALL. There are several good regimens that have been developed for adult patients that do not include asparaginase. However, with the recent uh, several trials we have seen with the addition of asparaginase in the management of adult patients with ALL, I think we have to incorporate it in, in our treatment regimen upfront for most of the patients. The dosage can be adjusted in adult patients based on their comorbidities, based on medical uh, concerns, based on organ functions. One side effect that is notable for asparaginase are hypersensitivity reactions. There are several formulations of asparaginase. E. coli asparaginase was the original asparaginase and needs to be given more frequently and has a higher incidence of hypersensitivity reactions. New formulations, pegylated asparaginase, has been developed and is approved for the treatment of ALL. And hypersensitivity reactions are remarkably reduced down to a range of 10 to 15 percent, as opposed to previously up to the up to the range of 30 percent. I think it's important to notice two different hypersensitivity reactions. There's an immediate hypersensitivity reaction re related to the application or infusion of asparaginase which is manifested by fevers, by chills, pruritus, um, even hypotension. They can be managed with stopping the infusion if it's intravenous infusion, giving the appropriate supportive medicines, including steroids, epinephrine, fluid, fluid support. A second form of hypersensitivity is mediated uh, through or from antibodies against, asparag against asparaginase, essentially. This has a twofold implication. For the first, Sometimes we see these antibody-mediated hypersensitivity reactions after the initial induction course because it takes some time to, time to produce those antibodies. Another implication is for the treatment response. There are so-called silent antibodies. It means not antibody will inhibit the effect of asparaginase. Some antibodies, patients do not develop uh, clinical significant transfusion reactions. However, the antibodies are still able to reduce the activity of asparaginase which then would reduce, to, would reduce the activity. There are assays to me me measure the asparaginase level, and we're aiming to, inc uh, to maintain a level of asparaginase in the blood of above 100 international units per liter. That is important. Antibodies are not yet routinely measured. So what I would say, it's important to keep those um, hypersensitivity reactions in mind, A, for the clinical care of the patients immediately, as well as potentially for the outcome of patients to giving them the appropriate asparaginase dose and keeping the level over time. Another question that sometimes comes up is um, what is the right dose of asparaginase or PEC asparaginase to give? In some of the regimen, for example, the augmented hypersiva and some of the other regimen, we use a dose of 2,500 um, units per meter square. But I can tell you from experience, sometimes you go down to 2,000 um, units per meter square or even 1500 units per meter square. I mentioned earlier, ideally it would be if we have serial measurements of the asparaginase level because that's a good reflection of the continued activity of asparaginase in, in, in the blood. And uh, hopefully at some point we will routinely measure this in all of our patients. It is often done on clinical trials to show us what the right dosages are and to compare the outcomes. So I think I want to emphasize to, to close with asparaginase that age is not necessarily a contraindication, but just the opposite of adult patients to re receive asparaginase. Pegylated asparaginase has less hypersensitivity reaction, is generally well tolerated. It also has less other side effects like transaminitis, hyperbilirubinuremia, as well as pancreatitis, some of the other feared consequences and side effects.